The GTX 1060 is still the most popular GPU in the world, at least according to the Steam Hardware Survey, which obviously isn't surveying the entire world, but it's a big enough sample size that I'm gonna go ahead and say it's at least one of the most popular and probably the most popular. Anyway, a lot of people still have one and a lot of people are kind of the buy a mid-range GPU and then upgrade every other generation, which means a lot of 1060 buyers would have normally bought an RTX 3060 when it launched. But the problem is when it launched, it got scalped, there was miners, hard to get one, price was through the roof, it's been well over $600, if not even $750 to $800 on the actual in-stock prices you could find it for a long time now. So I get that a lot of people have skipped this upgrade, but we're not quite to the 4000 series launch yet. And even when the 4000 series launches, you're gonna have to wait in order to get yourself a 4060. They usually don't come out at, at, with the initial GPU launch. That's usually the high end. So it's still a long wait if you're waiting for the 4000 series. So with GPU prices actually finally coming down a bit, although not currently MSRP as of the time of filming, you can start finding RTX 3060s in stock for $500 or even less fairly regularly, although they won't necessarily just sit there at that price. Now, I even managed to find some deals where it was like $500 with a $50 off coupon code, things like that. I ended up buying the ROG Strix version of the RTX 3060 and I got it for 550 because I actually missed some of the good deals. And this thing has a ridiculous cooler. And in this video, I'm gonna be putting it up against my GTX 1060, for, uh, it's the EVGA SC version. And as you can see, it is certainly a smaller single fan cooler and all of that. But I'm leaving both of these cards at their default settings which does mean that I know the uh, at least the um, 3060 f f Strix does have a small factory overclock, although I could probably push it much farther. Maybe we'll do a future overclocking video. Anyway, so what we're gonna look at here is not just a bunch of benchmarks showing that the 3060 is better. I'm actually gonna try to compare graphic settings that you might actually play the games at. So they're not, and we're gonna do this as side-by-sides of actual benchmark runs. So you can see a lot more of how the frame rates fluctuate, where what your 1% lows actually look like versus just seeing it in a graph to really get an idea of, you know, what does the image quality, what is turning down the settings actually mean if you see them side by side? Can you reach the same kind of frame rates if you're willing to turn settings down? So it's, it's really more than just a, here's the relative performance as a percentage in this video. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you some of my, my thoughts on if this is the right time to do this upgrade. Okay, so here we see both the GTX 1060 and the RTX 3060 at their maximum settings at 1080p in Cyberpunk 2077, which despite being well over a year old now, is still one of the most demanding titles out there. And that's even before you try to add in ray tracing, if you have a ray tracing capable card. And we will look at some comparisons here uh, with the RTX 3060 and what it could do with ray tracing in just a minute. But as you can see here, the 3060 is able to deliver a very, very good experience at 1080p Ultra. Well, the 1060, I would say is unplayable at the Ultra settings. But what I wanna look at in this video isn't just comparing these two cards, at the same settings, it's looking at the actual experience you might get using them. Where the 3060, I think you might use at 1080p Ultra, I think it's very clear here that the 1060, it would just be absolutely silly to be trying to play the game at these settings. So let's change up the settings. Now what we're looking at is running the 1060 at 1080p medium. And we're looking at on the RTX 3060, we actually had some headroom there, but I'm not saying you should turn ray tracing all the way up to ultra. I'm trying to show off the differences in features here. So with the 3060, you at least have the option of turning on ray tracing to ultra. 
as long as you go with some DLSS to the quality setting, which at 1080p to me, I'm gonna be honest, this is not how I would use the RTX 3060 in this game. I probably would just play at ultra or even down to high in order to keep frame rates up. But I know a lot of other people might prefer to have playable frame rates, which it clearly is at these settings. And, you know, it's even at these aggressive ray tracing settings still outperforming the 1060 at the medium settings. And that's the other thing I wanted to highlight here. Now, to be clear though, there is a little bit of performance overhead when recording this game. I mean, any game in general, but it did seem a bit heavier on the 1060 in this recording this game for some reason. So it would perform slightly better and, you know, both GPUs would. What we're looking at now though is, what if we try to bring the 1060 up to like a 60 FPS experience? Well, I put the graphic settings all the way down to low and also turned FSR, which added in the uh, Cyberpunk 1.5 update. Apologies if you hear my kids running around upstairs. That usually happens in my videos as I film them in my basement while they're playing happily. Anyway, I turned FSR down to ultra quality, which is gonna run the game at a lower than 1080p resolution and then sharpen it and edge detect it a bit. And, uh, you know, it boosts the performance at a cost to image quality. On the right hand side, you can see the native 1080p image is definitely clearer and crisper. And I'm also showing off what the RTX 3060 can do if you keep it at the high preset, which honestly, you get a huge bump in performance dropping ultra down to high. So if you're on a monitor capable of above 60 FPS, you might want to seriously consider using just the 1080p high settings on the 3060, despite it being capable of running the ultra settings or even some ray tracing. Now we're going to look at 1440p, because some people might have bought a 1060 with a 1440p monitor back when it was, you know, a more capable newer GPU. Or maybe you've upgraded your monitor to 1440p and you're like, oh man, this thing's struggling. The RTX 3060 is actually a perfectly capable 1440p card, although notice I'm running it down at the high settings and I'm using DLSS quality, which at 1440p does look pretty good, although it's still definitely not the native resolution. Now I could have done something like run it at 1440p medium or even high and still had good results without DLSS. We can see that the 1060, I've got it all the way down to the low settings, and we're also having to use FSR instead of DLSS. So this is a chance to compare the two. And I definitely feel like uh, the DLSS upscale is looking sharper here. And performance wise, we're on much better settings and still getting much better frame rates. And again, I'll mention that both cards do slightly better when not having the slight recording overhead. I'm also running both cards at their stock settings. Both of them could be overclocked. Now, what I'm showing off here isn't even using the 1060 at all. What I'm trying to show you is that by upgrading to the 3060, you even have the option of using this as a budget 4K GPU. Now, you should not purchase this for 4K, but if you're the kind of person who maybe has a monitor as well as a 4K TV, and maybe you play on your couch sometimes, I wanted to show off that the 3060, if you're willing to play games with DLSS down to the balanced setting and turn some graphic settings down, it's a very, very playable 4K experience that can still look quite good. Although you can have it be a 4K native experience if you're willing to play it more like 30 FPS. But to me, while I can definitely see the issues with DLSS. Um, I think it's worth it on a graphics card like this if you're trying to play at 4K to get a much, much, much smoother gameplay experience. And I didn't bother testing the 1060 at 4K, <laughs> but I did test it out in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this is the game on its maximum presets. You slide everything to favor quality and you know, the 1060 is somewhat playable here. There's certainly scenes where it drops below 30 FPS, but the 3060 is crushing it at the absolute maximum settings. However, this is definitely a game where the maximum settings really tank your performance. 
and don't offer that much more visually compared to tweaking the settings a little bit lower. Also apologize that the two screens are a little bit out of sync. I started them perfectly in sync, but this benchmark has a slight variation sometimes and throws it off a bit. But anyway, so what I was saying about the settings here is that if, if you optimize the settings, now HU optimized settings, HU is standing for hardware unboxed. If you check out the hardware unboxed YouTube channel, they did an amazing series of two videos optimizing the settings in this game when it came out. And do you see the dramatic performance gain we're getting here? It's making the 3060 a high refresh rate experience and getting the 1060 up to a very playable, you know, mid to upper 40s. In some scenes in this game, you'd definitely be um, around 60 FPS. And again, w if you overclocked and didn't have the recording headroom, you would be a lot closer to, uh, uh, to 60 here. But let's take a look at 1440p because with these optimized settings, the 1060 can at least deliver a playable 1440p experience, although it is more of that, you know, old gen console 30 FPS kind of thing. Although um, the RTX 3060, what I'm showing here is the maximum preset. And one reason I wanted to do this was to see the difference between the optimized settings and the maximum settings. Uh, so you can see that you're really not losing that much in the image, in my opinion, uh, for the massive performance gains that you get from using these optimized settings. They are certainly worth considering if you're going to be playing this game on pretty much any graphics card, to be honest. And once again, I'm showing off the, uh, the RTX 3060's ability to be used as a budget 4K GPU. If we use the optimized settings, we actually get a playable native 4K experience, which is really impressive. And while DLSS doesn't offer quite the dramatic performance boost that it, in this title that it does in others, it does, by going down to balanced, actually get you around a 60 FPS 4K experience with these optimized settings. So I'm honestly pretty impressed by that, although again, I'm not saying go out and buy this GPU specifically for 4K. It's just neat that it's able to deliver a 4K experience. Now, let's hop into Forza Horizon 5. And here we're looking, I, I'm, I'm kind of going to shorten the rest of the test here. We're looking at the 1060 down at the medium settings versus the 3060 at the ultra settings. So notice these are not matched settings. I'm trying to match more of a, these are settings you might actually play the game at, and here's what you would get. So they're honestly both pretty good, but obviously the 3060 is better. But I'm emphasizing that you can turn down settings and get a completely playable experience on the 1060 in this game. And as we get into this easier piece of the benchmark, you can see that it's well over 60 FPS. And I think that's what more of the actual gameplay is like in this game for the most part. Now, again, just to show, show some more stuff here, we're looking at 1440p medium on the 1060, whereas the 3060 is doing 1440p ultra and also doing 4K ultra. And what's interesting to me here is the 3060 does 4K ultra and outperforms the 1060's 1440p medium, which I just thought was a somewhat interesting comparison here. Although honestly, you'd probably want to turn down from Ultra if you were trying to use the 3060 at 4K, but once again, it's delivering a playable experience and a great 1440p experience. By the way, this game also has an extreme setting that I'm not using here just because I feel like you lose a lot of performance at extreme. All right, so my biggest takeaways from the benchmarks we just watched are number one, the GTX 1060 is still playable, even in extremely demanding titles like Cyberpunk, and many titles are far less demanding. However, I benchmark this in pretty much every major game that comes out, and we certainly are seeing more frequently games where it just can't hold a steady 60 FPS at native 1080p resolution, even turning in-game settings all the way down. Again, apologies for my kids running around making noise during the video. <laughs> That's what you get on this channel. It's still just a hobby for me in my basement. <laughs> anyway, um, but despite maybe not being able to hold 60 FPS, it can definitely still play every title that's coming out. And so if you can make it till the next series of GPUs, 
you should be able to get an even larger performance jump by buying the next mid-range. However, we don't know whether we'll see another nightmare of scalpers and crypto mining and availability issues when that series launches. A lot of people waiting for the 30 series ended up getting burned because, you know, if they had bought a 20 series before the 30 series came out, they would have ended up with a much better deal than what they've been able to get or just haven't been able to get anything at this point. So do keep that in mind. That could happen again. Now, the other thing I want to mention is the RTX 3060 is certainly not the only GPU you should consider upgrading to. And recently I've done a comparison between the RTX 3060 and the RX 6600 which is generally much easier to find at much lower prices, even now that the GPU market has gotten a bit better. Now the RX 6600 is from AMD, and I know some people are just less familiar with AMD products or have some aversions to them. And there certainly are some pros and cons. And the RX 6600 isn't quite as powerful as the RTX 3060, but it certainly delivers a fantastic 1080p gaming experience and it's a massive improvement over the GTX 1060. And it's possible that in a future video, I'll do a more extensive comparison between the 1060 and the 6600, although I've touched on that in other videos as well. So overall, if it was me on a 1060 right now, the thing I would keep in mind is that this is actually probably the last chance to sell the GTX 1060 at a fairly high price compared to what I bought it for. Um, pulling up some of the most recent information on used pricing on eBay from Hardware Unboxed, we can see that the 1060 is still holding a reasonable price right now. But if the GPU market continues to improve on new cards, we could see these used cards coming down in their sales price. They'll be harder to sell and harder to get your money back out of. So let's say you found a $500 or even better, a $450 uh, RTX 3060 deal, and you were actually able to sell your 1060 for $200, you know, that could be paying for almost half of it and actually bring the RTX 3060 upgrade to about the pricing that you would have actually paid for your 1060 when you bought it. So if I found a decent deal and, and was willing to sell my 1060 and could get around $200 for it, I think that actually I would take advantage of that upgrade and just do it right now. Um, that's what I would do. If you don't wanna deal with selling your card, then honestly, I might just continue to wait and see what the next series has in store or consider the 6600, which I even spotted one. It sold out like instantly for like $300, which is actually below MSRP on Amazon. I don't know if that was a pricing mistake, but it was up there for a few minutes and some people got it. Um, but more realistically, it's closer to $400 right now. Now, hopefully this video was useful for you and I hope all of you have an excellent day.